Welcome. We are glad that you are joining us for our last worship together in 2020. We're glad you're part of us. This morning, we're opening up our worship with a beautiful song with some familiar faces like Emily and Cassie and maybe some other familiar faces, but it's a worldwide United Methodist Church virtual choir from all over the world. So what a great way to begin our worship this day.
Today, in lieu of a traditional sermon, we are offering three devotions that will hopefully remind you that there's a new year ahead and that you can set your spiritual intentions on what is most important. So you're going to notice that I share a devotion and then Tyler and then Abby, and between there'll be some music. We took Romans chapter 12 and we sort of divided up the first six verses, and we looked at it through Paul's perspective to help your hearts set your intention on what it is that you want spiritually for your life in this new year. It is almost 2021. So this passage of scripture that I'll be sharing from and Tyler will and Abby will is all from Romans chapter 12. Here's my verse. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture all around you, always dragging you down to, the, to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best in you. He develops well-formed maturity in you. You know, when I think back, to the culture that I grew up in. I was a teenager in the 80s, and I wonder if any of you know anything about the 80s, but I'm gonna try to stimulate your memory. Does anybody remember what was super cool to wear? They were called jams. Do you remember these? I know I owned a pair that were yellow and had an amazing paradise scene on them. Maybe some of you liked the pants in the 80s that were popular called parachute pants. Or maybe if you were like me when I was a teenager, we love to say with great sarcasm an expression called gag me with a spoon. We had all kinds of cultural things that if I did those things now, people would think I'm nuts. But at the time, I fit in. This passage says, do not become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You know, that's our desire for 2021 is to spend more time thinking about God rather than all the things that are going on around us. We can be hungry sometimes to fit into our culture. We want people to think that we blend in, that we have the right friends, that we're in the right community, that we believe the same things as those that um, we call cool. When I was a teenager, my dad worked really hard at getting us six kids, some sort of car to drive. And so my car that I got was this uh, little kind of ugly car called a Chevette. And I don't know if you remember Chevettes, but mine wasn't, it was not only just a Chevette, which was kind of an awkward car. Mine had this, the words on the side, sport. So needless to say, I was really proud of my car because dad got it for me. And so I drove it to school and Something interesting happened. The cool girl at school's name was Cammie, and Cammie didn't realize that I had let a friend drive my new car around and around the parking lot. So I was actually walking behind her, and so she didn't know. She thought I was the one in the parking lot. And I hear her telling my group of friends, oh my golly, have you seen Bev's car? It's terrible. What a dork. And I remember thinking, oh my golly, this was one of my dear friends. Maybe we're not as connected as I thought we were. I think back on that memory, and it reminds me of this verse that Paul says, fix your attention on God, not on Cammie, not on your spouse, not on your boss, not on what your best friend thinks, but fix your attention on God. What would happen if in 2021, I began to fix my attention on God. If that is who I leaned in to listen to, the scripture says this is what will happen. You will be changed from the inside out. See, culture has no power to change your inside. Only God can do that. So as a closing illustration, I've asked Abby and Tyler to pop up here. Tyler's going to hop up on a chair, and I want you to kind of understand the struggle that we sometimes face if you're dealing with someone that maybe has been bringing you down with their negativity, with their addiction, with their lifestyle, with the way they believe, with their neg- uh, just whatever it is that kind of drags you down. This is what happens, and this is what Paul says to us 
and this illustrates it. So Tyler, first you're going to get Abby, who always is pulling you in the wrong direction, and try to pull her onto your level. Get her to, to the good side. Bring her into that positive place. As you can see, it's very difficult to do. Now, on the other hand, Abby, pull Tyler down into your world. The scripture said it like this. The culture around you will be dragging you down to its level of immaturity, but God brings out the best in you. May we all in 2021 long to fix our attention on God, that he might bring out the best. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and to each member belongs to all the others. I remember in elementary school at Smoot, we had these two students. They were one year older than me. And 
they were always kind of picked on. But I remember they would get into a fist fight with each other once a week. I don't know if they keep a record of how many times students get into a fight. But if they do, these two would be right at the top. I was always puzzled by this. Why are these two best friends always fighting with each other? One day we were in PE class, and I remember we were running around the gymnasium, and as the one is running, he's cutting the corner, and the other one comes up right behind him and just runs right into him, basically tackling him right into the cinder block wall. At first, my reaction is, this is awesome. Like, thankfully, we have an exciting fight to watch. But I was just puzzled by that throughout the rest of the day. Why are these two constantly fighting with each other when they should be uniting and maybe fighting against their bullies? This verse reminds us that as God's children, we are all a part of the same body. And I believe the same message applies to us that it's time to stop fighting with each other and start working with each other. This verse reminds us that we are all a part of the same body. Let's remember that being a part of the same body, we all have a different point of view, and that's okay. And it's time to stop acting as if our role is more important than someone else's. We are all a part of the same team. These two students had a lot of anger built up, and they seemed to take that out on each other. And this year, I've recognized the same thing. We have all sorts of anger built up in our lives, whether that's through politics or this pandemic or other things going on in our world. But let's stop taking that out on each other just because we have different points of view. In Matthew 25, it tells us of questions that we will be asked in heaven. I was hungry. Did you feed me? I was thirsty. Did you give me a drink? I was homeless. Did you give me a room? I was shivering. Did you give me clothes? I was sick. Did you stop by to visit? These are the questions we will be asked in heaven, so maybe it's time to stop bickering with one another and fighting with one another and use that energy for something productive and helping out those who are in need. Because when we, Jesus tells us when we do something for these people, we are doing it for him. Amen.
what a delight. Justin McCullough, we thank you that you actually arranged that and put that together, and we um, celebrate that with you. Gather the children, because Tina has a word about our new year, 2021, and how they, too, can set their spiritual intention. And then please stay tuned, because Jim Alder will play for us Auld Lang Syne. Auld Lang Syne. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and took the time to celebrate the reason for the season. Since we just celebrated Christmas, that means we have another holiday coming up. Can you guess the holiday? That's right, it's New Year's. This year, we're gonna say goodbye to the year 2020 and say hello to the year 2021. A new year kind of reminds me of an empty bucket. We have a year that's empty and we make all these plans to fill it up. Maybe we want to lose weight. Maybe we want to exercise more. Maybe we even want to go on a big fancy trip. But sometimes we realize that our plans don't always get accomplished and they don't fill up the year. Maybe we need to stop and think, is there something about me that I need to change to help me accomplish my goals? Maybe I need to take the time to get closer to Jesus to help me accomplish the goals. And maybe my goals for 2021 to fill it up should be read the Bible more, say my prayers every night, and tell a friend about Jesus. And when we focus on the real reason, Jesus, we find that we start accomplishing our goals in the new year. So I challenge you in the new year, I want you to stop and think, do you need to do something to come closer to Jesus so that you can accomplish and get to know him better. Maybe you need to read your Bible every day. Maybe you need to say your prayers. That is a way to get closer to Jesus. Let's say a little prayer and you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and thank you for a new year. Help me to remember in this new year, I need to focus on you and that will accomplish my goal of getting to know you better. I love you, and I know you love me too. Amen. Have a great week. up our passage from Romans chapter 12, and there will be a musical response to her devotion by Emily McCourt. I'm going to be reading from the same passage, Roman 12, that Bev and Tyler read from, but my verse is verse 6, and it says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. God's word here is very clear that we all have different gifts. He even refers to it in another verse as a part of the body, the body of Christ, or even your physical functioning body, and how we have different parts that all do something different, that your hands to pick things up or to hold hands with ones that you love, for your feet to take you places, and your brain to think, they all have different moving parts. And just like all those pieces of our body have different moving parts, we each are a different moving part of the body of Christ. 
And he's very, very clear that they're all different. What does this mean? That each special function of the body of Christ is that we would just work together to create the full body. Because without your hands, your feet could not make a whole body. Your torso could not make a whole body. Your head cannot make a whole body. They all have to work together. My talent is not going to be the same as Bev's. <laughs> My talent will not be the same as yours, nor yours the same as your neighbor's. However, God is clear that he can use them all. If we all had the same gifts, we would not be a functioning body of Christ. So as we go into the new year, I hope that we can take all the different functions that we each have, all the different gifts that God has blessed us with, and that we can together use them to create a beautiful body of Christ. And I think it's safe to say that after this year, we could maybe use all of those different gifts to make next year better. So let us not judge others' gifts. Let us appreciate them for all that they are, for the gift that they are from God, and use them to make Christ's body beautiful in, these coming, in the coming year. Amen.
We have shared our prayer concerns online, and please know that we continue to pray for you throughout the week. So we're thankful to Marty today who will light a candle for each prayer concern that you have mentioned. Josh Brothers asks us to pray for the family of Dave Fox and for the family of Harold Winden. Luther Hollingsworth asks us to pray for Linda Walls, Sam Yates, Bridget Edwards, and Helen and Marshall Musser. Diane Hayes asks us to lift her dear friend, Reverend Joy Butcher, and her parents, Reverend and Mrs. Verlin Butcher, as they all three recover from COVID, which they've had for a month. Mary Humphreys asks us to pray for Randy's mother, Beulah Humphreys. Kellen Leaf asks us to pray for her mother as she continues to recover from COVID. And we continue to pray for Kellen as well. Peggy Kirsch asks us to pray for the parents of baby Arthur, who only lived for three days. Carolee Christian asks us to pray for her sister Deanna, who is having serious medical issues. Jim Bauer lifts up Jane Spicer. Phyllis Zink asks us to pray for all patients who are spending Christmas in the hospital. Jim Bauer asks us to pray for the family of Barry Wise, who passed away last week. Becky Edwards asks us to play, pray for John Brush, who is in ICU with CHF and pneumonia. Judith Jared asks us to pray for several friends who have different health issues. We continue to play, pray for hospital staff and employees. And Jenny McClung asks us to pray for those on the front lines, the hospital, nursing homes, EMT, fire, and police. Stay safe, church. And we, as always, we lift up your unspoken prayers, which you have at home. One of the verses of our passage of scripture this morning says that in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, but we are one body in Christ. Christ, as we call out to you our needs, our joys, our concerns, thank you for the sweet reminder that we are all part of the body of Christ. That though we're different, and though our lives may look different or our views may look different, we come together as one body in you, all of us members, all of us caring about one another. Thank you for the gift of prayer, that we can pray for each other, that we can believe on each other's behalf, and that we can walk alongside each other spiritually. So today we lift up all of these members of your body, those that were mentioned and those that have gone unmentioned. Thank you, Christ, for who you are and how you heal us. In Jesus' name we pray all of these things. Amen. Before we offer you a beautiful musical benediction, I want to let you know what's coming up. Starting next Sunday, the first Sunday of 2021, we're kicking off a new sermon series, and it's going to be called Jesus Challenges. I'm sure you're aware that Jesus sometimes said and challenged us in hard ways, things that I find spiritually difficult to do, like love your neighbor or answer the question, who am I? Also things like love your enemies. All of these things are challenges for sure. And so I want us to explore those together over the next two months. We're going to have some special guest speakers that will also challenge us. Melissa um, Shortridge, who is our district superintendent, will be sharing one week. Our bishop of the West Virginia Conference will be sharing one week, Bishop Sandra Ball. Of course, we'll hear from Tyler and from myself. So we are looking forward to hearing how our spirits can be challenged in 2021. Stay tuned for our musical benediction.
church family to offer a gift of tithe or offering. You can do that in three ways. You can bring it to the church office. There's also a drop box outside the church office if you'd like to place it there. You can mail it to P.O. Box 69 or you can go on our website and give electronically. Thank you for your gracious giving during this holiday season.